period poverty is you do not have access to a period product. And Share the Dignity did a period pride report um, that came out this year, just in the last couple of months. 22% of the menstruators that they surveyed within the Australian population had to improvise on period products due to cost. So if you just actually think about that, that means that they could not go to the shops and buy a tampon or a pad, um, single use or recyclable. These are not options for 22% of the people surveyed. Mm -hmm. They had to actually look and go, what can I bleed on? Can I bleed on toilet paper? Can I, um, do I have an old T-shirt that I can cut up and actually bleed on? Um, do I just need to stay home and, and bleed here because I don't feel safe and comfortable to go out into the world because I don't have an adequate menstrual product to absorb my blood and I might leak? Welcome to Wildflow, the podcast with me, your host, Charlotte Ponto. I'm a wild feminine cycle coach here for the awakened woman who is ready to reclaim her body, menstrual cycle and feminine power and to live, love and lead in flow with nature's wisdom. In this podcast, I'll share how you can live in sync with your menstrual cycle and life seasons, heal your relationship with your womb and rites of passages and embody your wild feminine as a multi-passionate woman in life, mothering and business. It's your time to flourish as a cyclical being in this modern world. Are you ready? Let's fly. On this episode, I spoke with Amanda and Sahara from Weaving the Red Thread. They are both naturopathic menstrual educators who are empowering the reclamation of women's menstruality wisdom. Their teachings nourish holistic well-being. They support girls and women and menstruators to understand their body mind, heart, sexuality, sociability, and how this flows within their cyclical nature. Amanda and Sahara are based in the Hunter region of New South Wales, Australia. They are hosting an online fundraiser of the amazing awarded Pandora's Box documentary, which unmasks the global pandemic of menstrual inequity, when this is going to be followed by a panel discussion. All the proceeds are to support the Share the Dignity, Australia's Christmas Appeal. And they really want to see Australia lead the way in positive menstrual well-being and supporting period poverty awareness. So this documentary is going to be screened on the 18th of November and you are invited. Today, though, we had a really important conversation about what period poverty actually is and why this is something that even in countries like Australia, we really need to be paying attention because it's very, very common for people to not be able to access period products, but also adequate menstrual education because of the significant overwhelming taboo around periods and blood and menstruation. And so, Today we spoke about what it is and what we can do about it. Simple ways that we can be activists in our own homes, families, friendship groups and also communities and how by coming along to watch the screening of Pandora's Box which is online we are supporting a fantastic charity to do really important work. So listen in and um, check out the show notes to book your tickets to come along and watch the um, watch the screening that you'll also get um, 48 hours access to. So even if you can't make it live. So wherever you are in the world, this is one for you. Okay, enjoy. Okay, today I'm joined by Amanda and Sahara from Weaving the Red Thread here for a really important conversation about menstrual cycle awareness and uh, the importance of having education and access to period products and the special work that they're doing. So thank you both so much for being here. It's really lovely to have you. How are you both today? Yeah, thank you for having us here today. We're, I'm, I'm really good. I'm Amanda. Um, and thankfully, the weather gods have really been nice to me. There's lots of sunshine outside of my place at the moment. 
<laughs> how about you, you. Samara? Yeah, I'm really good. Thank you so much for having us today. And I wanted to congratulate you on being nominated for your coaching awards as well. I saw your post last night and just wanted to take a moment to celebrate you and the amazing work that you're doing. Um, It's just quite incredible, the ripples that are coming forward from the work that you're putting out into the world. And it's awesome that you're being recognized for it. Oh, thank you so much for seeing that and celebrating with me. I so appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. Very welcome. Oh, I'd love to start with um, a cycle check-in, if that's okay with both of you. I think it's so lovely to hear where we're each at, if you have a menstrual cycle, that is. Um, it's always so lovely to kind of frame a conversation with where we're coming from and and getting a sense of, of how that feels for us today and where our energies might be at. So I'm on day 11 and feeling very much in my inner spring and I've had a beautiful gradual rise of energy, but that's been kind of dampened a bit by a few terrible nights sleep because of my two-year-old who just does not want to sleep. So, but otherwise, yeah, feeling very... Um, joyful I think and creative Mm. really feeling that spring spring vibes even though it's rainy and quite cold here today in contrast to where you are how about you would you be happy to share where you're at in your cycle if you have one Mm. so I am at day two of my cycle um and actually feeling really rested over the last couple of days has been some big intensities in my household. My children are a little bit older, so I've got 11 and 9 and 7 and there's been lots of transition with going back to school. So I've been taking lots of extra self-care this last couple of days and carving out time to rest um, and really tapping into the dreaming space. So feeling good and grounded, kind of glad that this is not um, a visual podcast (laughs) because I'm definitely in that cave space of just holding energy within. Mm. Mm, Beautiful. Thank you for being here whilst you're bleeding. Mm. Yeah, thank you. That's beautiful. Mm. And I'm on day 24 of a 26-day cycle and last night I felt myself just dissolve into the void so today I feel very floaty and uh, dissolved is just the word like I kind of feel like I'm really kind of not here but I am here and um, yeah just am appreciating that space to dissolve and to be present in the place in between I feel like I'm in the in-between worlds I'm yeah, menstruation and bleeding is a is a front of me and I haven't landed there, but I'm sort of coming out of the cycle into the space between those two and, yes, aware that my words will be less eloquent because I'm less present in this plane. I love that so much. Yeah, in that void, that space between and feeling in that neither here nor there and that that's that sort of vagueness that's coming in that I love that thank you for sharing I love how we're all at slightly different points so it's going to be just really lovely to have that in mind as we weave this conversation together thank you both for sharing so you two are partners in work you've created Mm -hmm. weaving the red thread I would love to hear um if you could share with us some of the work that you do and how you found each other and founded weaving the red thread and and how how you got to the place you're at today sure so um sahara and i are both very similar in our background we're both naturopathic menstrual educators and we live fairly close to each other um, so I'm out in Largs near Maitland and Sahara is based in Newcastle area and we were doing similar work 
within our regions and we got really excited because we were like, yay, somebody else is doing this really important work. Um, and so when we connected, uh, we connected at the time where there was actually a call out from a local community elder um, up around Port Macquarie region and who's one of um, my mentors who's just beautiful and she was looking for and asking for people to come into her region to support um, some menarche education, some premenstrual education for mothers and daughters and families. Um, and that's really where Weaving the Red Thread was born from this community call out for deep knowledge around the menstrual cycle, but to help this transition through from young girl into maidenhood and supporting the mothers and families alongside of her yeah so we're almost at our year birthday we've kind of hit it with Beltane um and we've got some feedback yesterday from that that beautiful um mentor of ours who's in Port Macquarie and she just shared with us how the community has continued to grow and what they've embedded in place with the girls coming into Red Tent um, and some of the transitions and friendships that have created through the work that we did with those big workshops there and presence. Mm. Did you want to add anything, Sahara? Um, so Amanda and I are both individually and collectively really passionate about um, educating and supporting and nourishing girls, women, menstruators and men as well. We feel like it's really important to have everyone in on this conversation so that we can move beyond it being a just silent internal conversation so that women and girls and menstruators can actually get the support that they need to be cyclical beings and um, that fuels everything that we're doing here at Weaving is to create a community where people can come to to find education, inspiration, nourishment, support and a place where they feel that um, they can relax and that the narrative that's being shared is supporting them in their journey. Um, so creating community is a really big focus for us and that's what we're going to be launching next year as well. We've kind of, in the year that we've been together, we've been exploring different avenues of how to share this in a um, effective um, way and we've received this clarity it's like we've been in the inner winter of our business and mm. we've received the visioning and the clarity um, and we're transitioning very slowly into that inner spring um, which will be with the launch of um, our offer next year which is you know this online interactive community to support people exploring um, their cyclical nature and how to flow with that with self-understanding and ease to honour where they are and what their needs are. Mm. Wow, you do <sighs> such special work. That's really, um, oh, it just, it sounds so you know, impactful what you're doing with that community and then having um, realize like how how you're making the difference and how the work is impacting people and seeing that you know love the way you described it as you've had your inner winter for your first year and happy mm. birthday Thank and you. um <laughs> and now that it's all coming together and you're you're transitioning into the spring of your business mm. that community I think that's divine and really affirm from my perspective as well the importance of having a community around around this and it not being something that like you said is something we're doing on our own in mm. in silos you know and not not talking not sharing and not understanding the differences that we can all have and all experience these things differently and I love the that you're bringing men into the conversation as well I think it's I think it's the um it's like the next hurdle it's like you know the people who are bleeding need to understand what's mm -hmm. happening for them and then the people around us the other half of the population who are affected by by the cycles and our cycles as well and are empowered to have that knowledge and understanding of of what they're witnessing and and what their part to play in um in celebrating mm. the cycle and supporting the 
menstruators around them and changing that collective um, way of life that's that can become more cyclical as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite amazing when we've worked with men individually or in the workshops to just see them because they they have a lived experience because they've lived with women um, and menstruators and for them to then get a cognitive understanding of what they've been experiencing and then for them to go, oh, wow, okay, I can see how I can show up in the different areas mm. of the cycle and how ultimately for me if we all kind of have this understanding of ourselves within our own nature and our own cycles and we share with them their cycle and they're like oh wow I didn't know I had a cycle and that I was affected by cycles <laughs> so we have an increased ability to support each other and to share love which mm. for me is one of the ultimate things in being a human is the connection that we can have here in this planet and the joy that we can have from that and when we can understand another person's needs we can consider them and the connection that we can have can be so much greater so when we share with the women too that the men have a cycle and that they have needs just like we have needs they're like oh wow so the capacity to increase our ability to connect increases when we understand each other's biological cycles and the fact that we're affected by the planetary universe cycles collectively and you just see people just relax and go oh wow oh my goodness okay and it just creates this thread going forward that allows for harmony and cohesiveness at a completely different level mm-hmm. and I would say as well you know mothers of sons are desperately seeking this information because they want to be enhancing their children's well-being and understanding and compassion for all beings. And so when we start to bring these conversations into the whole community, we create cultural change, not just women advocating for themselves. It's it's shift. Yeah. Yeah, very special. I mm. I agree. I I hear that a lot of of women wanting to know and of opportunities to educate and support their boys so that they can mm. be the change makers and the space holders. And I think that's that's fantastic. So congratulations mm. to the both of you for an incredible first year and yes. I'm very excited to see what comes from this with your with your with the next the next phase with your spring mm. phase. Yes, and one of those things that you are are um, advocating for at the minute is period poverty, and mm. you are you're holding an online uh, fundraiser, a screening of a movie called Pandora's Box coming up soon, with all proceeds going to share the dignity. And I just really want to um, to hear more more about this, and I'd love to have a conversation about period poverty to start with and to ask you to explain to everyone what that is and why it's something that we need to be mindful of and how it's how it's impacting people Mm. so share the dignity is an amazing Australian charity that supports lots of other charities as well Um, and the reason that we chose share the dignity to fundraise on behalf of was because the real world impact that flows through the money that's coming from the fundraiser goes towards filling bags of period products that can support. So one ticket from the fundraiser sale supports the purchase of four lots of pads or tampons or a cup for a menstruator in need. And that's, that's delivered throughout the whole of Australia, which is amazing. Um, The screening of Pandora's Box is actually an international award-winning film. We're really excited. It dives into it. It's a 75-minute documentary and we follow um, different cultures and their experiences of period poverty. I think period poverty is is very, um, I don't know if people understand that it's occurring in Australia as well. So that's we're really looking to to lift the lid on that that menstrual reality of beginning these really important conversations around 
what are the statistics around period poverty? And I know Sahara's got all of the statistics ready to go, so I'm going to let her do statistics. Um, but, you know, what, what is actually the reality in Australia? That's, that's the conversation we want to get started as well. So the documentary will be amazing. Um, we've been so supported by Diva Cares, who owns the licensing for the screenings. And their CEO, international CEO, is going to be doing the introduction to the screening for us. Um, Helen Connolly, who's released the Menstruation Matters Report, the South Australian Commissioner for Youth and Children and Young People, will be doing an introduction to our panel. And our panellist is actually going to have um, Share the Dignities founder and um, coming to speak with us about the actual reality of, of working within Australia around period poverty. So... We're going to have the panellists of um, lots of, there's some researchers, there's some menstrual educators, there's Share the Dignity CEO. Um, Sahara and I are going to be the moderating or speaking. We haven't really worked that one out yet, mm -hmm. but one of us will take a naturopathic approach and menstrual approach and stand on that panel. Um, and we're really looking to spread this out as far and wide as we can to begin these conversations for our entire family because period poverty is not just an inability to access period products. That, that part is still really prevalent in Australia and that's devastating in its own right. But what we're seeing is so many girls and menstruators do not have an understanding of their body and period poverty is as much about a lack of menstrual education and a lack of cycle education mm. as it is about a lack of access to period products. And, you know, one of the, the latest studies that was released this year still shows that one in 10 girls don't know what's happening to them when they get their first period. You know, we're seeing something like that. I think the statistic and Sahara might pull me up on this, that 60% of girls didn't feel like they had been properly educated on how to manage their periods in day-to-day -day life. That's, those are devastating statistics. And that's really where we want the emphasis and the understanding to start these conversations around period poverty to really shift and that it's happening, it's prevalent, and it needs to be shifting and changing. Mm. Sahara, would you like to jump in with anything statistic yeah. wise? Because I'm sure you've got the whole <laughs> thing ready to go. <laughs> yeah, stats don't stay in my head, so I've got them in front of me. Um, and, yeah, at a very, very basic level, period poverty is you do not have access to a period product. And Share the Dignity did a period pride report um, that came out this year just in the last couple of months. 22% of the menstruators that they surveyed within the Australian population had to improvise on period products due to cost. So if you just actually think about that, that means that they could not go to the shops and buy a tampon or a pad, um, single use or recyclable. These are not options for 22% of the people surveyed. Mm -hmm. They had to actually look and go, what can I bleed on? Can I bleed on toilet paper? Can I, um, do I have an old T-shirt that I can cut up and actually bleed on? Um, do I just need to stay home and, and bleed here because I don't feel safe and comfortable to go out into the world because I don't have an adequate menstrual product to absorb my blood and I might leak? So when we actually bring it down to that very basic understanding, 22% of Australian menstruators surveyed did not have access to a period product because of the cost associated. So when we're talking about poverty, we're talking about finances. They do not have the money to actually buy a period product. Um, and we've seen a move with um, the abolishment of the period tax, which took about a 20-year campaign to actually abolish this tax on what was seen as um, a luxury good for women. And actually going, this is an essential good. Without this, we, we are limited in what we may or may not be able to do. And that we see in um, more we relate to developing countries and think about girls who have got their periods and they may not be able to go to school because they don't have access to period products. This is not just a third world issue. This is an issue that is here, alive and happening in Australia. And... Um, that's something that I don't think people have so much awareness of and that's why we also chose Share the Dignity because they're helping 
Australian girls, women and menstruators. We've totally got support for any international girl, women and menstruator. And as an Australian, I want to help in my own backyard. And even though we're a developed country, we have lots of issues here in period poverty and poverty in general. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel that it's really important to um, help our neighbours um, and then to help our neighbours who are further afield. Um, and if we just look at some of the other stats there that, that came out in the survey, 40% of menstruators had to change to a less suitable product due to cost. So they had access to a product, but maybe it wasn't the product that they, they're most comfortable with or that they would like to use use or that they even um, support from a sustainable environmental because we do know that menstrual products have a huge plastic impact to our environment. They don't have the, the funds to actually, then they're using a product that, yes, it's doing the job, but maybe it's having adverse effects for the environment and they wish they could do different Mm. Um, and the other big stat that came out from that survey was 49% of menstruators had to wear a tampon or pad for more than four hours because they didn't have access to more. So they're looking at how much their money could buy for their period and going, okay, I have these many pads or tampons. I know that my period is going to last for three days, five days, seven days. I have to ration them out so that I can actually meet my my blood needs and we know that especially with internal um, tampons that having them in for a prolonged period of times can have adverse effects to our holistic well-being um, so the fact that they're having to wear them for longer than what is um, hygienic and health um, that brings up this issue too of that yes I have a product but I don't have enough um, so Share the Dignity is working super hard. They have drives in March and August and they've got the Christmas appeal. They have a fun run. They do all sorts of different stuff to raise money from the Australian public to support the Australian need of period poverty. Um, mm. And, yeah, so we feel really humbled to actually be supporting that. Um, and the response that we've had from the Newcastle and Hunter community on a business level supporting us has been quite amazing. And it always excites me and inspires me when having the menstrual conversation is more open than what you expect. Like we're all aware that our society and culture has been living under and is living under a menstrual taboo, which it tells us not to talk a about menstruating and when you actually do start to talk to people this is kind of I think the thing about taboos it's like you know mental health if you look at that it's like you know for a long time it's like do not share with people about your mental health status because there's stigma associated with that but as a human when you share with another human I'm not doing okay they're like oh me too it gives actual permission for the conversation to happen so as we're having these conversations with business community we're actually being really inspired by the fact that they are responding to our conversations and that this conversation is not as closed as what people may perceive. The closeness comes from our own internal um, story. And it's always really interesting for me as a menstrual educator of when I actually feel awkward talking about it because it's like, oh, okay, there's another level of the menstrual taboo that is inhabited in my psyche and my body somewhere Mm -hmm. and that's really interesting. Okay, let's shift that and work through that because, A, my life's work is to open up this conversation and to support people to understand what's happening within their their being because it's not just a biological experience. It's a mental, emotional, physical, social and sexual experience that's constantly in movement Um, and that, yeah, it's just amazing that society is opening up and we're seeing that with, you know, we had Australia's first period summit this year and Mm. people from all different industries in Australia were called together from, you know, Helen Colony's report, which was just amazing. And she was talking to the teenagers. So I think as adults, we forget to talk to the kids and we get into this adult role where We've been sold, I think, this cultural and society lie and another taboo where talking about puberty 
menstruation, sex is awkward and we're uncomfortable with it. And it really blows my mind because every single human being has been through it and they've been through it and experienced whatever their experience was, whatever degree of comfortableness, discomfort, isolation, confusion, the journey they've been on. And as a community and a society and educational system, we kind of step away from our kids when it's the biggest transformation they've had from being birthed to being a toddler. During that period of time, they've had to learn how to actually be in their body and hold it and move it. They've learned how to actually articulate speech. They've learned how to navigate the beginning of emotions. Um, their brain has been developing. Their body has been developing. The same thing happens at puberty. Our kids are going undergoing, on average, a 10-year kind of transformation that is physical, emotional, social, mental, cognitive, every aspect of their body is transforming and we kind of go work it out and we wonder why our kids aren't thriving on the other side. So I really invite people through these conversations like watching Pandora's box with your teenagers. Mm. It's like how do we have these conversations to start a dialogue and you know what? Parents, I get it. It's uncomfortable, but that's your uncomfortability. That's your story. So you can put that to one side and deal with it. In the meantime, you can be present for your kid that's asking a question because that was one thing that came out in Helen's report was that the kids are asking for teachers who are comfortable to teach this material because they pick up on the anxiety. They pick up, I don't want to be talking about this. And the reality is they have questions because they're changing and they want to know what's going on. And so if we can answer these questions with the best ability that we have at that time, they're going to come back when they've got another question. Because if we can't answer them, they're going to go look for that information from the internet, from mm. other kids. Um, and we can't be guaranteed that the information that they get is going to be helpful or that it's appropriate to their development. And once you know something, you know something. Once you've seen something, you've seen something. And once you've, you know, receive something and you've started a pathway with it if it's incorrect we all know the reclamation of actually mm. going back and reseeding information that actually is is true and helpful yeah mm. you are so speaking my language that that's amazing <laughs> I just all of what you said is just I I just sat here nodding and just thinking that was such a powerful um delivery of so much really um devastating information as you said Amanda as well with that mm -hmm. the way you described it 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 really is and I'm sat here feeling rage and um even though I know this it still stirs up so much emotion and passion to want to change this but also um just I have a lot of hope for the future and that you know we're doing so much work collectively there's so many people now who are doing the kind of work that 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 you and I are doing and these conversations are being had and like you were saying about having all these reports at the minute um in the the forum and I think um the next generation are really it it it, it blows me away with how even though they can sense our discomfort and the shame and they're receiving so many messages about, like you say, don't talk about this. They're asking the questions and they're pushing us to embrace our own wounding and shame around this and and transform. And I have so much hope for the future that, that they're going to be able to, um, you know, guide, <clears throat> guide their peers and their own children to to a world that really celebrates, you know, period power, but it's, it's, on a, you know, it goes so much, so much further than that as, as, as you and I know, you know, when we embrace our periods, we embrace our bodies and we embrace our full spectrum of emotions and we can learn to, um, you know, be, be at home in, in our, in our, in ourselves and we can see ourselves fitting in and belonging and um, you know, changing the earth on that much greater scale of changing the way we live in a way that really honors women and women's bodies and, and, and the cycles and, and all of that. But 
Wow, just the information that you shared there really, um, really knocked my socks off. Hearing, I just want to go straight back to that statistic that you, you said at the top about 22% of people who are bleeding having to improvise. And it's something that I think a lot of people just can't imagine. <clears throat> you know, being able to you know, there's there's a lot of disposable, sorry, not disposable, reusable products available now. And I think a lot of people just think what well, the answer is to, you know, everyone should just go and just go and buy a moon cup and then you can use it over and over and you only need one and it's, a, you know, one investment. But that's a lot of money. Like some of the brands cost 50 Australian dollars. And, mm. you know, if you've got a, a child who can't go and, and spend a few dollars on a on a packet of, of, of tampons or pads, how are they to be able to save up to buy this cup? And then with this, the whole aspect of needing to sanitize it and how do you do that in a household where there's shame and secrecy around, around periods and you can't exactly just pop your moon cup in a, in, a, in a pan on the stove and disinfect it for five minutes in front of, you know, in, in, in that way. And it just goes, I think it's, you know, this, I, I see a lot of, conversations about you know just how how much more available the these reusable products are but they're just so out of reach for so many people still and that's that's not that's not just necessarily the the answer mm. and you know I hear hear from people as well who share that you know their parents might have had the money to purchase products for them but the act of having to ask for the for the money or for the product is just is too is too much and people have felt that they couldn't do that and instead have opted to bleed into toilet paper or or something and um the number of girls i hear from who at school particularly in the primary years you know we know that periods can begin you know younger than they perhaps might have done in the past and you know, there are nine-year-old girls who are who are bleeding and not having access to any uh, sanitary bins in in the school, and and the mm. teachers saying things like, "Well, what do you need them for?" Just not having that knowledge. It's it's really um, there's so much in this. Mm. Um, it it's got so many. It, it shows up in so many different ways, and you know, it has short-term, very real short-term effects and very real long-term effects as well about how we we learn our worth and um, learn to connect to our to our bodies and, and to each other as well. So really happy to be having this conversation. And so I'd love to know um, how people can can get involved if if there are two two things. If you're if you're somebody who's listening to this thinking, well, how how can I do my bit? You know, I don't I'm not a menstrual educator. I'm you know, how how do I how do I as like a single person contribute to changing this? Do you have any suggestions for how people can can make a difference? Yes, gosh, there's so many so many ways and the simplest one being start the conversation to start sharing your story and being open to hearing other people's conversations um you can if you're looking to support this awareness and you do have the ability to purchase extra products when you go shopping share the dignity has lots of drop-off points so bunnings is one of the big ones um and they're doing a christmas appeal at the moment that bunnings is a drop-off point for and it's a fill the bag so all the information on how to really practically step in and support community around you is on the share the dignity website which we can send you as well to pop onto your links um if you're able to you know purchasing an online ticket and bringing your family to the screening of pandora's box is a wonderful way because sahara and i've been working on this for months we've had to pivot a lot but this is all social advocacy for us this is all about if this is all volunteer based for us so every dollar that we've got is going straight to share the dignity and they use their funds very clearly to support the needs of menstruators um, and not only you know they they support menstruators and 
into the mature years, so into the postnatal years, as post, um, you know, postnatal, yes, but also into the postmenopausal years of women who may not be able to afford products like pads from leakage um, as well. So they have a really varied support that they put in place. So there's lots of different ways to support either physically, financially, if you're able to, um, or just with that beautiful opening of conversations and starting to do this shift of culture work as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and shifting in that conversation, that shift first has to come within self to feel some sense of comfort before you can verbalise it. For some people, verbalising creates comfort. For other people, they need to create some internal comfort before they can Mm. verbalise. And some of the the tips that we give to moms around this is to create a positive menstrual bathroom. So to actually look at your bathroom Mm. and go, you know, uh, whatever period products you use, hidden in the back of the cupboard so that they're not affronting to anyone. So no one sees them and they only come out very discreetly when it's your time of the month and, and very discreetly used. So to actually change your bathroom up, bring some light into your bathroom and bring your menstrual products to a place where they're not in the corner with the spiders and the cobwebs um, and put them, you know, next to the toothpaste, next to the cotton buds. They're just another thing that we use for self-care. So when we can actually Mm. take the charge out of things, we can start to take Mm. the charge out of the conversation. Um, And if you use reusables, you know, you might have a bucket in the bathroom, um, which again, might be uncomfortable, but it starts that conversation with whoever you may live with, that you're actually in that part of your cycle without actually having to share. We don't need to walk around with, I'm on day 24. We can share that we're on day 24. <laughs> this is our personal prerogative to this and mm. that the actual understanding is first for ourselves about where we are in our own nature and what is more open to us and what is not as open to us in our cyclical nature so that we can utilise it to optimise our experience of ourselves, our day and what we're creating. Um, And that to share that with other people helps people understand where we're coming from, helps other people to be supportive if we're needing support. Um, And that can take for some people quite a period of time. So it's about being comfortable with that conversation with yourself and the little things that you do for that to spread into your environment. So we call it role modelling. So how you actually show up in yourself that filters out and ripples into the world around you. And for me, it's probably the easiest way to have the conversation is start to create that comfort within self and start to live little bit by little bit. I love how Red School talks about the 1%. Like if you can just take 1%, that you know, just change your bathroom 1%, change your social commitments 1%, change something just 1% that supports your nature you're having the conversation without having to be having it in a way that you may feel uncomfortable and may be triggering because we do have a a frequency that tells us not to have the conversation. So how can you break that frequency down in a way that supports you and is not confronting to you and that's individual to each person because we're all wired so differently and we all express so differently so that would be my biggest tip is having the conversation Mm. with self and letting it filter out and one of the easiest ways is just to make your bathroom more friendly to the fact that you're cyclical and that's not just your menstrual products but also it might be essential oils it might be magnesium salts that you actually use for a bath. So it's actually um, not just menstrual, it's cyclical self-care. So how am I actually caring for myself as I move through the cycle? And this is something that Amanda and I um, are aware that there's such a focus on reclaiming the period and reclaiming the bleeding. Mm. And it's like, yes, and this is part of a cycle and it is one phase of the cyclical needs and as we are aware of the cyclical needs throughout the whole cycle we've got different needs everywhere and now self-care is really different in different places it's Mm. just at the bleeding time you may be demanded to self-care in a way that you haven't elsewhere and that it's a feedback system to a biological feedback system to how you've been caring for yourself 
throughout the rest of your your menstruate the cycle that's preceded the menstruation. So just gentle. I think it's really gentle, gentle mm. to your nature, whatever that means for mm. you. Just gentle to your nature, making little changes so that you're more comfortable with the fact that you do bleed and that other people um, inquire about the land had a great thing. She was curious, curiouser and curiouser. The more curious we can be about our nature, the more that it is about an exploration and an unfurling of actually self-knowing. And I recently was listening to someone and I don't know who it was, so I can't credit it, but they were talking about the self-development industry. And if we actually focus from self-development and about this sense of achievement and going somewhere within ourselves to self-inquiry and the curiosity of self, that leads to self-evolution, which you can say is self-development if you want, but it has a totally different energy to it and a different focus instead of it being for, you know, people who understand this language, you know, sort of inner summer achievement, um, external agency um, development it's actually this inquiry and encounter of self and a consideration of self to care for self and out of that there will be flourishing always amazing thank you so much for that and I really love the idea of just the simplicity of of making things very visible in in your um in your bathroom I think absolutely you know when you say bring things out from the the corners where the, the cobwebs and the spiders live yeah, let's make it front and center. It's just another self-care product. And the way that, you know, you've talked about honoring the whole, your whole needs and your whole nature across the whole cycle and normalizing that, like you say, the bleed is something that grabs your attention. And if you've tried to ignore it, your your cyclic nature, then that's this, the bleed that's going to get your attention. But mm. it's honoring that, that whole, that wholeness, the whole the whole cycle and I really love you know the that it, it's we can do very practical things like you were saying Amanda like you know um having conversations and giving our money or products and, and doing what we can but it also starts with self-inquiry and um healing our own wounding around it mm-hmm. and getting to a place where we feel able to to open those conversations and role model and show our family and our children, even, you know, teeny tiny children can, it's not something we need to hide. And I think that we commonly women think that it's something that, you know, children always want to barge in the bathroom when you're on the toilet, when you're, when they're small and instead of shutting them out, let them in and see. And I think it's, um, it's profound just the, the simple act of of letting them see, be letting mm. it be visible, as well. So, so much, so much in there. Thank you, Amanda. Did you mm. want to add something? I was just going to say, from a from a now grown up perspective of those little children that barge into the toilet and see everything and are involved in everything and have thousands of questions about the processes of female bodies. Um, you know, I now have. 12 and seven year old boys my daughter knows everything about everything there's there's no secrets in our house um and the boys know as much as my daughter does and so now they'll actually trigger and say oh mom it's the moon's really dark does that mean that it's your moon time and could I get you a cup of tea or you know do you need me to do why don't you rest mum and I'll go because this has just happened for me I've run you a bath mum why don't you go and do that and we'll actually just make some toasties for for dinner and I'm like oh I love you guys (laughs) that's the dream that's the goal and I and I think about their partners and you know we do a lot of because naturopath runs through my everything you know, we do a lot of work on foods and foods that nourish and and reflections of when I'm not having a great cycle. Actually, why is this cycle not great? Well, mummy didn't have a lot of time in the last couple of weeks and and actually my stress levels have been higher and that means this is what's happened. And, And so they can really see the impact throughout the whole cycle of making sure that your body has what it needs to be really healthy and well. And 
reflecting back that comes our period every month going here you go let me give you a report card of your health and well-being over the last month so yes yeah and those little people like we know they're learning from us from the moment they open their eyes up Mm -hmm. so the more that we can normalize health and well-being to just make Mm -hmm. that a bigger conversation as well um, the more that they understand how to be healthy in themselves because they're seeing it role modeled in front of them. So I totally hear you, Charlotte, and saying, you know, mm. as young as possible, if you know, um, whenever you you choose or you become a parent, um, don't wait until puberty to to start opening up these conversations. It's it's a way of being and a way of living. And it's a, it's a lifestyle that comes to health. And I think this is the biggest fallacy of the health industry is that health relate health comes from a product. Um, and menstrual health, holistic health does not come from a product. It comes from how you live each day. And that day has an effect on mm. the next day that follows. And we know that the egg that is ovulated, it's been being nourished for three cycles prior. So, you know, if um, your menstrual cycle and that one hasn't been that wonderful in a a physical, mental or emotional experience, it might be actually inquiring back what was happening three months ago. Um, So we're constantly, as as a human, we have this incredible complex biofeedback system and um, we're not taught within our school systems to understand it. We're not Mm. taught really about the the complexity of what happens within our skin so much is happening within our skin just Mm. to keep us here in this moment and it has such an incredible intelligence and it's constantly reorientating itself so that it's homeostasis which it's is its internal balance is actually happening and when we are stressed, that will throw out our internal balance. And one of the things that is affected is our menstrual cycle because mm. cortisol takes the building blocks for progesterone and therefore we have less progesterone. So therefore we may have increased premenstrual or menstrual um, language I don't actually even like to use the word symptoms because it's a language the body is always talking to us it's giving us feedback when we use the word symptoms we're pathologizing something and yes there is more pathology to the menstrual cycle than there ever has been so we need to question that and go what is going on in our ecosystem in and when we think about nutrition nutrition is not just food Nutrition is our thoughts. Nutrition is our feelings. Nutrition is the people that we're hanging out in. Nutrition is the quality of our environment. How polluted is it? And as much as we live in an incredibly technological, expansive, connected world, we also live in the most isolated and most polluted and undernourished time in history. And our body is speaking to us saying, hey, I'm not okay. But the only way it knows how to talk to us is in physiological language, which we in our um, medical framework see as symptoms which relate to a problem instead of, oh, actually, what's this telling me? What is this actually telling me? It's a narrative there. And, yes, there may be pathology. We need to actually have a look at that. Um, But what is it telling us? So when we've got young girls going to GPs and being put on the pill, they don't even actually get to learn their their language um, and the language of their body, which is being interpreted as a symptom which needs to be fixed. Um, It's actually, no, it's actually that um, gateway into inquiry. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that's my just little add-on there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And I'm just hearing you and thinking, you know, I I had completely lost um my awareness of the the fact that the you know, the egg is being nourished for three whole months. Like I'd completely forgotten that as as being a truth. And, you know, like I'm I'm learning from from what you were just sharing and you know, you talked about period poverty as being like a lack of access to education as well. And, you know, all of these things, it's like, you know, we, we, we just really need to get this word out there that, Mm -hmm. like you say, you know, impacts the decisions we make about our health and 
how much we, you know, medicalize, pathologize, you know, and treat, treat our bodies with, with medicines when we don't need to. And Mm -hmm. instead of just being able to come back and tune in and asking, you know, what's going on and, and, you know, on that, on that, that level and, oh, so much, so much in there. So much. And that our endocrine system is, is so interrelated, you know, our menstrual cycle is one, one aspect, our, our reproductive hormones are one aspect of that beautiful menstrual cycle, but that our adrenal health, like Sahara was talking about our stress levels, our thyroid <coughs> health, our, our brain function, you know, it's, it's all so interrelated and that holistic view of how we nourish ourselves is reflected through our cycle and women have this amazing opportunity throughout their lifetime but you know how we how we process through our beginning of our cycles how we learn through our cycles we take it into the altar of birth we become mothers with this information we become menopausal women you know this transition through the menstruality timeline this is is big transformative information that when women have access and girls and menstruators have access to this it changes how they function in Mm. themselves within the world within their motherhood journeys or their womanhood or their just their journeys through life Mm. makes a really big impact Mm. yeah and so not having access to this kind of information it just perpetuates what starts off is already um, disadvantage, mm. you know, not having access to products, not having access to knowledge and therefore not being able to look after themselves and then potentially having worse a menstrual experience. You know, you said about, you know, not using the word symptoms, but though that, you know, having a worse, worse outcomes to do mm. with health, you know, when you're some, when you're experiencing poverty, your stress levels, you know it's fair to say maybe a lot higher Mm. and the knock-on effects and it just it's like Mm. this this feedback system that's just making like perpetuating the problem and Mm. then is inherited and passed on through the lineage as well you know it's still taking up to eight years now still now Mm. up to eight years to get a diagnosis of a menstrual health dysfunction if there is real pathology there you know it's it's such a it's a a system that needs an overhaul (laughs) you know we need to be getting this information before we start menstruating so that we've got access to what is normal versus when is there when is there a need to actually reach out and do more than cyclical self-care like when do you really need to know more and unfortunately most of those younger women and girls it's they're landing on the doors of GPs that are not perhaps asking the right questions. Um, you know, that's something that Sahara and I are launching next year as a practitioner education program because even our naturopaths and our yoga teachers and our massage therapists and our if you're working with women or girls or menstruators, one of the questions you need to ask them is, hey, where are you in your menstrual cycle? How are you experiencing it? And I've loved being able to be in in partnership. Sahara and I have such a clear view of what makes a productive business structure within a feminine leadership model. And we begin our chats with, where are you in your menstrual cycle? How are you experiencing it? And still when we're in each other's lives all the time, it's it's really essential that this is coming into normalisation for the culture of actually if I want to know how you are I do need to know where you are in your cycle and how is that going for you Mm. absolutely I completely agree and I think as we started this conversation with a check-in it's it gives such a lens as to um you know how how you're experiencing your day in relation to you know what's going on in your body where are you how you feeling but also that reminder for people to to check in and take that moment just to pause and and feel and mm. and, and to notice in a world where <clears throat> you know commonly where a lot of people are up in their heads thinking or just flying by the seat of their pants through the day <laughs> it's just such a simple 
way to check in as well but yeah having mm. that like having that as an anchor as a, as a as like a portal inwards to business like you say relationships parenting um obviously healthcare um mm. friendships all the things every aspect of life i just love that um we can raise the awareness that everything is influenced by not just where you are in your cycle but where each other in the dynamic are as well and how that will change depending on where where you are it's Mm. beautiful when we're running workshops quite often it will just happen that Zahara and I had completely different poles so she'll be up while I'm down and I'll be up while she's down and it's working really well at the Mm. moment where we're coming back closer together um Mm. But it's it's when we're doing big workshops, it's pretty amazing to see us just go, whoop, let's be at different ends to meet different needs. I was thinking yeah. when you said earlier on about who's going to do the moderation at the mm. events, who's going to do that? Would that depend on where you're at in your cycle? Probably, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Well, it depends on how... <laughs> how how we're experiencing that as well you know some days it's like yes shine a light on me I'm ready and other days it's like no give me this to give me stuff to read and I'll respond yeah yeah beautiful yeah well speaking yeah. about that so if people want to come along and and participate so the um the screening is on the 18th of November is that right Yep, Thursday night, the 18th, and we start at 7 p.m., which is Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's, and it's online. Yeah, all online. From your own home. Mm -hmm. Have it, we've got a few different options for tickets. There's a single ticket if you just want to come by yourself um, or screen it by yourself. We've got a household ticket that's available. Um, we've popped up a small business ticket for you to send through staff networks that are, I think, I have a feeling that's got four tickets or five maybe. Um, cool. And then we've got a large business ticket, which has got up to 10 different screening options that you can send out to your staff members. So, yes, lots of different options. Fully encourage, grab the popcorn, grab some comfy things. If you're somewhere that you're not having to isolate, grab your friends and have them over for a bit of a a night of celebration. And, you know, the screening will actually be available for 48 hours afterwards. So if you can't attend live, that will be up and ready to go for the next two days. Um, And our panel discussion will also be recorded and that will be available for those 48 hours as well, which will be really exciting to see all the panellists. So we're hoping that this goes out into communities that otherwise we've had to really look at it as as a blessing to shift because our original date was at the cinema in Newcastle and was when all the, the the lockdown stuff happened. Um, so we've just had to say thank you to the angels who have gifted us and all of the people that have helped us to get this screening online now um, and our sponsors who have just been amazingly supportive so that we can sell as many tickets as we can for Share the Dignity and, and get that money going to menstruators in need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. And bring your questions. Like with, yes. for the panel, the panel is there to answer your questions as said we've got Rochelle the founder of Share the Dignity who you know social advocacy work is damn hard and I have so Mm. much respect for what she has built and created in Share the Dignity. Um, We've got menstrual researchers who are researching their scientists and this is their jam. We've got um, and the researchers aren't just in the science land, they're in the cultural artistic land mm. as well. And then we've got naturopathic wisdom, naturopathic menstrual wisdom. Um, so, you know, when you actually register, it says, do you have any questions? And we will be giving those questions to the panel and the panel will be asking your questions. And if we've got an overflow of questions, we hopefully can keep the panel on and we'll keep recording. (laughs) Um, But aware that, you know, people are turning up for a certain period of time, so we need to be respectful of people's time. But, yes, the panel hopefully can answer those questions. If not, Amanda and I will take on the rest of the questions that aren't answered Mm. because that's part of opening up this conversation and I kind of feel to share with you, um, we put together our own definition of period poverty. Mm -hmm. Um, And for us, it's a combination of a whole lot of different things. And I just want to state before I start sharing with it that 
it's a combination of a lack of a lot of things. It's not a combination of no to things. We're in a process of change. So when we look at a the menstrual taboo and a taboo's life cycle, we're in the place of questioning and challenging that taboo. So if you spoke to your mother or your grandmother or your great grandma, their experience would be very different from what we're experiencing mm-hmm. right now. So we're in this potent portal of change and creating a way forward for our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. And at present, we see period poverty as a combination of the lack of access to affordable and sustainable period products, the lack of practical information on how to use period products, how to dispose of them or clean them, the lack of access to menstrually safe and friendly toilets, with hand washing facilities and menstrual product bins, the lack of access to positive menstrual education about biology, physiology and cyclical living, the lack of education about normal versus abnormal menstrual physiology and contraception options, the lack of menstrual and menopausal workplace and school wellbeing policies. Mm. And I'm excited to say even though they're all a lack, They are in the process of change. And for the first time, I've been in this industry since I actually, from Menarchy, I was so happy and excited for my own introduction to becoming a cyclical being and was confounded with such um, disappointment at the reality of that, that once I left school, this has been my journey, um, that in you know I'm 46 now that we're actually in a period of time where governments are talking about this um we've got actual change happening on an infrastructural level that is happening in business is happening in politics is happening in schools that all takes times to filter through but we are actually in that place where the no has changed to the lack And with all the work that there's an amazing community that we're part of, Charlotte's part of, there's an incredible Mm. amount of menstrual educators and activists across the globe who are all doing their bit to change this lack to more of a positive. Um, So I feel very excited to actually be in this industry, this part of history, because history is being made. Mm. Yes, it is. Mm. to be part of it make history yeah. with us yeah. you know make and for me it's this bigger picture too of just making our humanity normal we yeah. all feel um and if we can all actually sink into wherever we are in our mind our hearts our bodies our spirit and we can be truthful with ourselves and we can be truthful with others, then this planet becomes a really peaceful place and a loving place and a Mm. harmonious place and an expansive place because I not only see myself, I see you and I have consideration for you um, and I want you to shine like I want myself to shine. Mm. Wow, thank you so much. Thank Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for the knowledge you've shared. Thank you for really bringing this conversation to to us to here here in Australia and to everybody listening which is you know overseas as well and <clears throat> just encourage everybody to wherever you are in the world you can jump on and watch this and hearing that the it's available for 48 hours afterwards is mm. Absolutely every opportunity to get involved and to watch and to learn and to start conversations and just quietly create change in your own family and friendships mm-hmm. as well and, um, and and get involved. Thank you so much, both of you, Amanda and Sahara. I Thank really, you. really loved this conversation. Before we close, is there anything else you'd like to add? Honestly, the conversation could go on forever. Getting yeah. three minutes, three minutes till it <laughs> together, going. Let's just chat forever. Um, no, thank you so much for for having us on. We're really excited in terms of where we're heading and the movement forwards, and we can't wait to touch back in with you in, in you know another six months and share with you the the opening of the new studio online and you know the we're excited with. Um, 
we've been accepted to speak at Seven Sisters, so we'll be there in March. Fantastic. So we've, we've got, we'll have lots of new courses that we're actually in the process of getting ready to launch. Um, so watch this space. Absolutely. I'll be watching and cheering you on. It's been mm. so lovely to connect with you as well on a personal level for me. Um <laughs> And, uh, you know, we've been following your work and I think that you're both incredible. I can't wait to see where your work takes you and the impact that you're just going to continue to have. Mm -hmm. So if people want to, I'll put the link in the show notes for actually um, getting onto um, the the screening to Mm -hmm. watch the movie Pandora's Box. But also if people wanted to connect with you and follow the work that you're doing and, you know, access your future courses and, um, you know, really benefit from the education that you're and the, you know, the information that you're sharing mm. that I see you sharing. I think you're sharing really um, fantastic stuff. Um, people can find you on Instagram and Facebook. That's right, isn't it? I've got you at Weaving the Red Thread and I'll put that link in the bio. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And the website is currently in development. So at the moment, the socials are just the best place to grab us. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. okay well thank you so much and i can't wait to watch the movie myself Mm -hmm. and um and hear the panel conversation that's going to be so juicy yeah thank you so much charlotte for having us here and for all the work that you do like we Mm. we see what you do and being nominated for two awards um, shows that other people see what you're doing too and the impact the ripples that you're putting out into the world are huge um so thank you for you and thank you for inviting us into this space with you today oh thank you so much thank you and just to say to that like it's such a thrill to see that you know people are valuing the conversations and the you know work being done on on menstrual education and and Mm -hmm. menarche education and you know it just so helps to get get this um get this this work and the like I say the importance of of knowing this stuff just mm. just out there as, as well so I'm super grateful mm. for for the platform to be able to do to do that and um and for your support and celebration in in that sisterhood so thank you both mm. it's really lovely to chat with you mm. thank you beautiful thanks guys Thank you so much for listening in. If you're loving this podcast and you'd love to help me spread the wisdom shared, please leave a review or rating or share this with somebody who you think would love to listen in. I'm really passionate about creating ripples of change and getting this information to more women, girls and people with a cycle so that they can reclaim their cyclic natures too. And if you'd love to dive in deeper with learning more about how to connect with your cycle and rites of passages, come and join our free Wild Flow Circle community or choose a course and learn with me on my online learning hub. All the links are in the show notes. And until next time, be well and go with the flow of your cyclic nature.